All right. So today, our final day, you get to do some analytic geometry. You're like, what the heck's analytic geometry? That is the scourge brought upon us by a lovely guy named Rene Descartes in France in the late 1600s, early 1700s. Because, you know, they were all plaguey and crap. And he got bored. And, you know, he went, he went and fought in wars and stuff. Because, you know, law school was too boring. And warring, there wasn't enough wars going on in Europe, apparently. And so he did a bunch of math to keep himself entertained. And he created the Cartesian coordinate system and used it to understand a lot of geometry. And now you all get to do the same thing he did, oh, 300 some odd years ago. <gasps> you all are just uninterested in cultural revolutions or anything. So what we're going to do is we're going to write equations. Do you all remember doing this in algebra? You should, or you shouldn't have made it this far, boo hiss. I guess we'll have to remind you. So, let's go back to the beginning. To write the equation of a line. You need stuff. What are some of the things you need to write the equation of a line? What are, what are other equations of lines? What kinds of equations do we have? Uh, close. You're, you're on the right track. Help me out. Slope intercept. What's that guy look like? That's your y equals mx plus b. Now, it's got a y and an x, but what did you need to plug into it to make the equation be real? You need a slope. And what? The intercept, which is a point, right? So you need a slope and a point. What's another version of an equation I could write for a line? Yeah. I could do point slope. Ooh, does anybody remember that one? A few people. You're going to redeem yourself? Okay, go for it. Um, it's y minus... Um, y1 uh -huh. equals slope. I'm going to put m for slope. And then in x minus x1. x minus x1. You did redeem yourself. Awesome. Oh, other than the plain y and x, what things did you need to put into this equation? A slope and what's that? A, a point. Oh, wow. So to write the equation of a line in any form of these two forms, you either need a slope or a point and or a slope and a point. So you need a slope and a point. How do you find slope? Rise over run from where? How do you find the rise and the run? Two points on the line. So maybe if you didn't have slope, it'd be enough to have two points. And then you could calculate your slope? Would that be good enough? Because you'd know enough. Okay. So that's all you need to be able to do this entire thing, is to be able to find points and find slopes. Do you remember how to find points on here? You look, right? Do you remember how to do slope? What was it again? What slope? Rise over... Run. Okay, so cool. You're set. See? All these fond memories from back in algebra get to come back and make you feel all warm and fuzzy inside. Okay? It was the good times. So we're going to go back to those good times. So remind me what a median is. Remember, we're doing analytic geometry, so we're going to mix that algebra and our geometry. So what's a median? Yes? It, it, so it goes from the vertex to where? It goes to the opposite side. Where on the opposite side? Go to the midpoint. So the median goes, oh, uh, wait a minute. The vertex of a triangle, if I graphed a triangle, the vertex would be a point, wouldn't it? And what's the midpoint? 
point. In the middle. Point. It's a point in the middle. I have two points here. Could I use those two points to figure out the slope? Yes. And then, then I have a slope and points. Could I write an equation? Yes. <laughs> We've got something going here. Yay! Okay, what about altitude? What makes an altitude be an altitude? Think back to last class. It's a 90 degree. There's something about a 90 degree somewhere in there. We got to get more specific. You got to know all the stuff. Uh, vertex. It goes from the vertex. To a perpendicular bisector of the opposite. Is it bisecting the other side? No, just. It's just, just perpendicular to the opposite side. Okay. Wait a minute. Vertex was a point. So we have one thing we need to write an equation. Oh, wait. What's perpendicular talking about? Is that talking about a point? It's talking about a slope. Because remember, perpendicular slopes are negative reciprocals of each other. And so if I'm perpendicular to the opposite side, I could figure out this slope and then be perpendicular to it. So let's see. So perpendicular slope, remember that was opposite reciprocal? And I've run out of space, so I'm just going to abbreviate it. So really, on an altitude, if I can find my vertex, and I can find the slope of that opposite side, can I figure out my perpendicular slope? And then I have two things I need for an equation. How convenient. And then perpendicular bisectors, oh dear. Do these ones go through vertices every time? Okay, so how do you make a perpendicular bisector? Where does it go? Where, where on the side? It goes to the midpoint of the side. And what else? What makes it a perpendicular bisector other than being the midpoint? Well, the bisector made it a midpoint. What makes it the perpendicular? You've done stuff. We need new victims. When it goes, it makes a 90 degree angle. Yeah, so when it's perpendicular to that side, it will be the perpendicular bisector? I know, shocking. The words mean things. So all you have to do is remember what, the, what these things do, and you can write the equations. Medians go from a vertex to a midpoint. Find your two points, make yourself an equation. Altitudes go from a vertex and are perpendicular to the opposite side. So you find the slope of this side, get yourself perpendicular, and use the, that slope and that vertex to create your equation. For the perpendicular bisector, you're going to find your midpoint of a side, find the slope of that side, and get perpendicular to it, and then you have everything you need in order to write your equation. So we're going to do one of each, and that's all we're going to do. And then I'm going to turn you loose. But that means you're going to have to like play along and do all the stuff. Can you all do this? Okay. I believe in you. Okay, so the first thing you have to do is you're given triangle DEF. You've got to draw triangle DEF. It gives you the points. I hope you remember how to graph points. Let's go. Draw your pretty picture. If you want to use colors, all the better. D, is it 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, there's D, and E, is it 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 1, 2, 3, there's E, and F, is it over 2, up 1, and then I'm just going to connect me some dots here. Is there a certain pattern we have to connect to? Well, there's, well, the only way you can connect them is to make triangle DEF. Do you have a ruler? Do you have a piece of paper? Oh. They have straight edges. They also have right angles. Uh-huh. 
Okay. So you should have yourself a pretty triangle that you done did draw. How you doing back there, gentlemen? You got it all drawn? Is it adorable? Okay. Hey, close enough. Okay. Shh. So I need to draw the median from D. So if I'm drawing the median, where is my median starting? Which vertex? D. Well, where is point D? At 2, 5. So I've already got my point. It's up here at point D. What else is true about medians? It's all written down on your notes. What else about medians? They go through that? The midpoint of the opposite side. So which side are we going to midpoint? EF or FE, whatever you want to call it. Okay, so I need to find the midpoint of FE. Okay, so here's F and E. And you have to figure out how to find the midpoint. Now, you can use that midpoint formula, or you can use the stuff we did back in Unit 1. Where you say, okay, I'm going to go from F to E, and F is at 2, 1, and E is at 8, 3. So to go from 2 to 8, how far up did I go? 6. So to go to my midpoint, I need to go half of that. I need to go up 3. So 2 plus 3 lands me at 5. Okay? And then to go on my Y's, I'm going to go from 1 up to 3. That's going up 2. And so half of going up 2 is going up 1. 1 plus 1 puts me at 2. So graph that and see if it really looks like the midpoint. 3, 4, 5, up 2. Oh, it does look like a midpoint. What would be a good letter for my midpoint? M works. We're going to call it M. Might as well. And so I'm going to even color it to match my other guy. So my midpoint now is at 5, 2. Notice I'm labeling everything. This is very useful so you don't start mixing things up. And some of you are going to ignore me saying this. And you're going to assume your brains can handle everything. And then you're going to done did screw up. And you're going to be awfully embarrassed on that test. But, you know, at least I warned you. So, I have my, my vertex, point D. I have my midpoint. Do I have what it takes now to write an equation? Sure, so I, what do you want to do? Do I have my y-intercept as one of my points? No. no. So I'm going to have to use my point-slope equation. Which point do you want to use? Does it matter? No. no. So you could do y minus the 5 equals, uh-oh, I don't have a slope, x minus 2. Uh, oh, dear, how am I going to find my slope? I got to do rise over run of which points? <coughs> At which which ones? Well, I'm trying to find the equation of this line. So it's going to be D and M that I'm going to try to find the slope of. So the slope of well, I've got D and M. Do medians go through vertices as well? Yes, that's part of their definition. Shh. So you're going to go, okay, I'm going to do my y's first, so 5 minus 2, and then my x's, so 2 minus 5. So my slope is 3 over negative 3, which is negative 1. And look at your graph. Does it appear to be going down 1 over 1, down 1 over 1, along that median? Okay, so we probably did it right. So my slope can go in there. You wrote an equation of a line. But wait, I've got to make sure you remember how to do everything. Please put that in slope-intercept form. Y equals mx plus b form. Oh. So you're going to have to distribute, y'all. I know. It's, it's real scary. So I know it's going to be like negative 1x or just negative x. What's going to be my intercept? I heard different things. Uh -oh. seven, seven. Plus seven? Yeah. Oh, well, look. When I drew it, look where it ended up at. 
it ended up at seven. So I must have done that right. Yay, you wrote the equation of a median. Pat yourself on the head, you're so proud of yourself. Softly. Don't hurt yourself. Okay. Oh, are you suffering already? No. Oh, dang it. Mostly from stress. Shh. Okay. Now, let's write the equation of the altitude to DE. <coughs> Altitude to DE. Hold on a second. So I've got to submit something, so hold on. Okay. So tell me what points do I need to draw? What do I need to draw an altitude? Well, I, we figured it out. What, what do altitudes do? They go through the vertex and they are perpendicular to the side. So what thing are we going to be perpendicular to if we're the altitude to DE? I'm going to be perpendicular to DE. And so if I'm perpendicular to DE over here on my triangle, which vertex, or wait, hold on, it's probably like a DE, I need to go through a vertex, what vertex do I go through? F. F. And so I need to also go through point F. Do I know my perpendicular slope to DE? No. Do I know point F? Yes. Yeah, okay, so we'll write that down so we don't lose it. Two, one. So now all I need to do is be perpendicular to DE. Well, to be perpendicular to it, I need to have an opposite reciprocal slope. Do I know the slope of DE yet? No. So we go and find it. So you say, okay, watch what I'm going to write. I'm going to do the slope of DE. The slope of this side is what I'm looking at. And to find its slope, do I have points on that line? Yeah, yeah I have D and E. D is at 2, 5. And E is at 8, 3. So to get my slope, I can do what? The 5 minus 3 for my Y's. And then the 2 minus 8 for my X's. What's that going to give me? 2 over negative 6? Did I subtract right? And what's that simplify to? Negative 1 third. Now that's the slope of the side. But what am I trying to write an equation for? The altitude. I need to be perpendicular to this slope. So what is my perpendicular slope going to be? It will be positive 3 over 1, or just 3. Okay. So my original slope of the side was negative 1 third. So I want my altitude to have a slope of 3. Oh, look, I have a point that's on my altitude, and I have a slope of my altitude being perpendicular. Do I have enough to write an equation? Hark, you do. So you go y minus what? Your y value, 1, equals, what was my slope for my altitude? That 3 times x minus 2. And so, of course, you're never satisfied with that. You like to put it in slope-intercept form just for the practice. And you do that, and what do you end up getting y equals? 3x minus what? Let's see if that ends up with... Oh, I know it's going to be perpendicular already because my slope is perpendicular. Let's see what that looks like here. Shh. So I'm going to start at my vertex... And I'm going to do a slope of 3. 1, 2, 3, 1. And then, one, so it's going to go somewhere like this. And it should go through the intercept negative 5. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5. That looks pretty close. 
to where it was supposed to be. And does that look kind of like a right angle up there in the corner? Where my altitude meets DF? You can check. Get a piece of paper or something that's got a right angle and shove it in that corner. And look and see if it really makes an altitude. Don't trust yourself. Check. Because when you do your assignment, you want to make sure you're doing it right. And on the test, you will want to know how to do check it, right? Always good on a test to know how to check if you did it right. Here's how you check right angles. You can just get another piece of paper and go, oh, look, there it is. Yay! It's beautiful. And so I'm even going to mark that with a right angle because I am so proud of it. Yeah? How'd you get that one? I, well, I know that my line has a slope of 3, and it goes through this point. So I started at this point, and when you do slope, you do rise over run, right? So I did up 3 and over 1, up 3 and over 1, and made some points. And then to draw the line, I connected the dots. Yep. Y'all scared yet? Good. Let's do the last one then. It's the scariest of all. I want to do the perpendicular bisector of EF. Okay. So in order to perpendicularly bisect EF, find EF in the picture. Do you see him? Is it the same one we were working with last time? No. In number two, we worked with DE. Now we're back to EF. So we're going to be perpendicular to this guy. So I need to be perpendicular to EF. How am I going to make sure I have a bisector of EF? What should my perpendicular bisector go through? It goes through that midpoint. Oh dear, do I know the midpoint of EF? Oh, yes! We found it up here. We just called it the midpoint of FE. But that's the same segment, isn't it? Yeah. So I don't have to do that work again. I know that the midpoint is already 5, 2. It's right here. So I've got the point, but now I've got to get perpendicular to it. Oh, dear. So how do I, how do I know when I'm perpendicular to EF? Well, yeah, but I don't have anything to measure a 90 degree angle here. So how else can I make sure I have it perpendicular? Oh, dear. What do I know about perpendicular slopes? They're opposite reciprocals. Gentlemen, I am not convinced you are listening. I would hate to have to move your fourth person to where I can always see his face so that I can be sure that y'all aren't talking when I'm, you know, trying to teach. That would be awkward. Okay? And so if I want to be perpendicular to EF, I need to find the slope of EF and then get perpendicular. So let's find the slope of EF here. Oh, look, there's my points E and F. I've got to do rise over run. So rise is y's. So 3 minus 1. And my x's will be 8 minus 2. And so you work that out. And what do you end up getting? 2 over 6, which is a slope of 1 third. So this side of the triangle has a slope of up 1 over 3. Up 1 over 3. But do I want the slope of the side? No. No. I'm trying to find the slope of the perpendicular bisector. So I need the perpendicular slope to that. And so I've marked it. I'm finding perpendicular slope. What does it come out to be? Negative 3. So I now have the point my perpendicular bisector goes through. I have the slope of my perpendicular bisector. Is that enough to write the equation? Yes. Yes. So go ahead, point slope form, write your equation. It starts with 
Y minus. And let's see, I guess I'll use the Y value here. Some people keep just waiting for me to write. Go ahead and guess. Doesn't hurt to be wrong in notes. Minus five. Did y'all get y minus two equals negative three x minus five? Oh, I already put it into slope. Oh, you already put it into slope intercept. Well, everybody who did it should go take that extra step now. Practice turning that into slope intercept form, and then we'll see if it looks right on our picture. And so you distribute, and you get y by itself, and what do you get? I got 17. Negative three x, what did you get? Negative three x plus 17. Plus 17? Okay. Shh. Now. Let's see if this looks the way we want it to. We go through the midpoint. Hi, stop. To be perpendicular, I need to use a slope of negative 3, 1 with this point. So I could go down 3 over 1, or I could go up 3 left 1 and up 3 left 1. Remember, to, you move with your slope. And then all you have to do is connect the dots to draw your perpendicular bisector. And then you can use something with a right angle to check. Does that appear to make a nice, pretty right angle? Yeah. Oh, that looks pretty good. Not bad. Also, it would have gone through the y-intercept of 17. Does that look pretty up there where it would be hitting at 17? looks pretty likely so okay that's probably good so this was my perpendicular bisector what was this guy right here altitude. that's your altitude and what was my blue guy that went through the vertex in the midpoint median. that was your median all right best way to learn it is to do it so you've got the remaining time in class it's about you know 20 some minutes to attempt to do the homework Thank <laughs> you.